Amen. Aren't you thankful for the, for the blood today? I'm glad that we're a church that believes in the cross. Not ashamed, not, in, not embarrassed, but we love and adore and are grateful for the old rugged cross. So much so that we got a 50-foot one behind me during Lent to help us to focus on the cross. You know, we got Easter coming up in a couple of weeks. And everybody loves Easter. You get to have the kids over after church. You might get a new dress. The kids, I remember as a little boy, I'd get a brand new suit every Easter. But you can't enjoy the victory of Easter without embracing the pain and the suffering of the cross. See, it's, it's hypocritical just to, just, to, just to take the celebration without going through the suffering and the pain and the heartache that got us Easter Sunday. There is resurrection. And on Easter Sunday, I'm going to get up in front of you and I'm going to say, he's risen. He's risen indeed. He's risen indeed. But in order to truly celebrate that and the honey-baked ham that you're going to get and all that comes with Easter, <laughs> you, you've got to go back and you've got to embrace the cross. And so as a church, we've been looking, we've got a year-long series on heroes of the faith. And so during Lent, we've been focusing on uh, heroes of Easter, unsung people that most people never even heard of in the Bible. They're heroes, men and women who sacrificed in order to, to give us the victory that we have on Easter Sunday. A couple of weeks ago, we started our series out with a young woman by the name of Procula, Pilate's wife. She was a hero. She stood up and told Pilate, that man's innocent. God gave me a dream about him. If I were you, I, I wouldn't mess with him. And we talked about the power of dreams that God is still men and women in dreams. In fact, Mike just came up to me before service and said, Pastor Scott, I had a, I had a dream last week. Uh, Pastor John came up a couple weeks ago. Pastor Scott, I had a dream. And, and, and so God is still speaking through dreams. And Procula is a wonderful hero that we can all look to. We can believe that God is still wanting to speak to men and women in dreams. Can I get an amen? Uh, we looked a couple weeks ago at, at, at Simon of Cyrene. The immigrant the foreigner, the African man who was asked to carry the cross of Christ. What an honor. Isn't that beautiful? He was forced, the Bible says, to carry the cross of Christ. But what an honor for, for Simon to, to, to carry. His name means to see. And I believe he was able to see things. When you carry the cross, you see things that you couldn't, you couldn't normally see. Simon was a, was a wonderful hero of the faith that, that in the minutes, listen to this, in the minutes where Christ couldn't carry his own cross, he was there. He stepped up, and he carried the beautiful cross of Christ. What a hero. We looked at the centurion soldier. His name is Longus. Longus because he had a long spear. And he was the one that pierced the side of Christ. Out of Christ's body came blood and water, symbolic of life in the word and the blood. And, 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 and Longus had a beautiful revelation. Even after stabbing Christ with his spear, he had a beautiful revelation. Surely he is the son of man. And you know people in your life that are they go around stabbing people. They go around hurting people. They go around with a long spear, and, and they're, they're hurting people. But even God rescues hurting people. Can I get an amen? amen. And the centurion soldier was a, was a hero. He acknowledged that surely he was the son of man, the son of God. Last week we looked at Dismas. Dismas was the criminal hanging on the cross of Christ, 
guilty as charged, deserved to die, and he looked over at Christ in his last few moments and said, Christ, forgive me. Take me with you to paradise. And Jesus said, dismiss. Before the sun goes down, you're going to be with me in heaven. By the way, dismiss, his name means sunset. Hmm. Dismiss, before the sun goes down, you're going to be with me in paradise. Today we're going to look at, next few moments, uh, Nicodemus. And I don't know where we're going to go. That's, that's okay. We're just going to try to go somewhere. Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish council, well-respected, well-loved. His name means victorious among the people. Probably would have made a good politician. Nicodemus was, was well-received, well-loved, admired on the Jewish council. And the Bible says in John chapter 3 that Nicodemus had a, a curiosity, a hunger to know a little bit more about Christ. You see, in the next few moments, we're going to talk very quickly about whether uh, you're a fan or you're a follower. See, you're either one or the other. You're either a fan of Christ or you're a follower of Christ. And in John chapter 3, Nicodemus was a fan. He was a, he was a, a secret admirer. He worshipped from a distance. Didn't want to get too close. Because he was, a, he was part of the Jewish council. He was victorious among the people. He was highly respected, and he didn't want to get all carried away in this Jesus stuff. So the Bible says that Nicodemus, although he was curious, he was very political. And the Bible says in John chapter 3, watch this, that at night he went and met with Christ. I wonder why he met Christ at night. I think he met Christ at night because it was convenient for him. At night, he wouldn't be seen. If he went during the day, he would be all over Facebook. So he chose to, 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 to have this beautiful conversation at night. It, it fit into his schedule. It was, it was convenient. It didn't, it didn't put him at, at risk. You see, that's what fans do. They don't want to get too close, so they'll meet with Jesus at night when no one will see them. They won't get narked on. They won't get in any trouble. And so Nicodemus texted Jesus and said, I'm a fan, and because I'm a fan, I've got to meet you at night. See, A.W. A. Tozier was really right. He says, there's a time coming where, where we're not going to be able to, 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 to worship the way we used to worship and, and, and casual Christianity. And Nicodemus was a fan, and he chose to worship at night when it was convenient can't come every Sunday. I'll come once a month. Can't give every week. I'll give when it's convenient. And there are multiplied millions and hundreds of millions of people around the world that are, that are fans of Christ. They're like Nicodemus. They'll worship at a distance and they'll worship at night, but don't ask me to meet you in the daylight. There's a lot of people in this community that are simply fans of Christ. They admire from a distance. And they'll meet with him only 
at night. I think it's interesting. This is not in your notes, but I want you to go there. If you're a follower, you're going to go there with me, and we're going to dig just a little bit. Go to John chapter 3, and look what Jesus said to Nicodemus by candlelight. In verse 19. He just spoke the beautiful words that Sandra talked about, John 3, 16. And then in verse 19, a lot of people missed this one. And this is the verdict, Nicodemus. Light. Everyone say light. Light has come into the world. But men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. See, there's a part of us all of us here today, that we like darkness. We don't want to be exposed in the middle of the day. And like Nicodemus, we are comfortable meeting with Jesus on our terms, meeting at night. And by candlelight, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, and he's speaking to us today, and he's saying to us today, men don't like light because light exposes them. Nicodemus, like us, we like darkness because we can hide in the darkness and, and we're not fully exposed and we have this casual Christianity where we're worshiping as fans, not followers. But something happened in Nicodemus. And we're going we're to go there in just a few minutes. In John chapter 3, he was a fan but in John chapter 19, he became a follower. Something shifted from John 3, where he worshiped Christ at night, to John 19, where he shifts from being a fan to a follower. You see, followers of Christ, they're, they're fully and they're deeply committed to the cause of Christ. They will worship in the light. They'll worship on Sunday morning. They'll worship online. You see, there's a big difference between fans and followers. And something beautiful happened in the life of Nicodemus, and he shifted from being a fan to being a follower. Are y'all with me? So let's go to John chapter 19, and let me show you this shift. How did Nicodemus shift from being a fan to a follower. And this is the sobering story after Christ had been cruelly crucified and he was hanging on the cross. Look at verse, it's in your notes, John 19, verse 38. And later, Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus. Now, watch this. But secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. And he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited with Jesus at night. And Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. And taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. It was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Now watch this. Hang with me. What happened from John chapter 3 where he was a worshiper and a fan by night to John chapter 19 where he was the one with Joseph of Arathia, Fema, to take the body of Christ from the cross, bring aloe and myrrh, and wrap him in linen clothes and place him in the tomb. He had the shift from fan to follower. 
Something happened when he saw Christ crucified. When he saw Christ die on that cross, there was a shift in his heart, and Nicodemus, victorious among the people, made a decision that he was no longer going to spend his time secretly worshiping at night. He was not going to be a fan. He was going to be fully committed and devoted to the cause of Christ. So much so that he was a hero because he had the privilege and honor of taking Christ from the cross and wrapping him in linen clothes and placing his body in the tomb. I love it. Aren't you glad today that you, like Nicodemus, were once fans? Something shifted in your life. Something shifted in my life, and we shifted from being a fan to being a follower. And we see this in Nicodemus. He became a devoted, committed follower of Jesus Christ. And my concern, watch this, is that we as followers, if we're not careful, we can shift, and the Bible say, drift away from being a follower to being a fan. It can happen. I'm not worried about the transformation that took place from Nicodemus from fan to follower. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about us turning from followers to fans. And it can happen quickly. What I love about the story in John chapter 19, it says that, that, that Nicodemus took, and I want you to look in your Bible, look in your notes, and, 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 and let's look at this just for a moment. He took myrrh and he took aloes. Circle those two words. Beautiful revelation here today. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. Why did he take myrrh and aloes? Because he knew that the myrrh and the aloes were elements of healing. It was a prophetic declaration to the world that Jesus was not only our Savior, but he was our healer. Wow. He was a devoted follower, and he was smart enough to know that when the burial process, you bring not only myrrh, but you also bring aloe. I love this. Aloe is symbolic of Christ the healer. Myrrh is symbolic of Christ the Savior. Oh, and by the way, what did the three wise men bring to Jesus during the Christmas story? Gold, and, gold frankincense, and myrrh. See, Nicodemus, now that he was a follower, he understood that this would be a prophetic message to the world, that Christ not only is our Savior and his body was broken, but his, his blood was shed so that we can be free and his body was broken so that we may be well. The aloe and the myrrh is symbolic of Christ the Savior and Christ the healer. And why is it so easy for us to accept Christ as our Savior, but sometimes we have trouble accepting him as our healer? Nicodemus had a beautiful revelation. It was a prophetic word for all of us here today. If Christ's blood can save your soul, Christ's broken body can heal your sickness and disease. It's myrrh and aloe. And only followers understand that revelation. Christ died on Calvary's cross. His blood was shed so that we can be forgiven. His body was broken so that me, we can be made well. And you need Christ not only as the Savior, but Christ as the healer. And the, follow, and the follower Nicodemus had a beautiful revelation. If Christ can save your soul, Christ can heal your body. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. And I find it fascinating that people can accept him as Savior, but they can't accept him as healer. And it all comes together in a package. You can't separate what was done on Calvary's cross 
And Nicodemus, the follower, understood it. And he said, as we bury Christ, we're going to bury him with 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe because he's our Savior and our healer. Now, if you're here today and you are sick in body, I want you to put your faith and the same faith that you use to get saved, you use that same faith to get healed and allow the healing virtue of Jesus Christ during this Lent season to come into your life, whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching online, I want you to tap into the faith that's available for us today and accept him as our Savior and our Lord. He wants to heal you. He wants to save you. And that can happen today if you'll simply reach out and touch him and ask him to make you well. Bruce, if you go to the keyboard just for a moment. I feel inspired right now to pray for people that are sick in body. We're just not going to preach about it. We're just going to, we're going to do it. And we're going, to, we're going to ask God to heal people that are broken physically. We're just not going to be fans. We're going to be followers. And we're going to believe the whole gospel. How many of you are here today and, and Christ has saved you from your sin. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. I want you to stand. And I know there may be some that will not be able to stand because of physical limitations, but if you're a follower of G Jesus Christ, I want you to stand. If you're not standing today, Today is going to be a wonderful day for you because Jesus is going to reveal himself to you as God the Savior. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can do it today. God will make you whole and well, and he will forgive you of all your sins, and you can be forgiven. And you can have that transformation like Nicodemus, from fan to follower. It can happen in just a moment. Is there anybody here today? But you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you want to know him, I'm going to give you the chance to let me pray with you and pray for you in just the next few moments. Is there anybody who doesn't know Jesus? Anybody? All right. Aren't you grateful that Jesus is our Savior? Now that same faith that you believe that Christ can save you from sin I want you to take that same energy and focus it on Christ being your healer. His blood was shed so that you may be forgiven. His body was broken so that you may be well. And this is what we're going to do right now. And I'm going to try to be COVID compliant, but I, I've got to do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. If you are sick in body, I want you to step into the aisle just for a moment. I'm going to pray for you. I've got oil here, and I'm going to pray for men and women that are sick in body. You're sick. Just come stand right here in the center aisle. I'm going to go right down this whole aisle, and I'm going to pray for men and women that are sick in body. Oh, Pastor Scott, I don't know. That's a little crazy. You're getting a little, getting a little weird. I mean, Christ is healer. Ask Nicodemus. He was smart enough to bring 75 pounds of aloe and myrrh. Christ as Savior, Christ as Healer. And a beautiful revelation. Healing's available for you today if you're sick. And we're just going to step out of faith and believe today. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord your I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Sing it again, church. my word. 
set my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Sing it one more time. I am the God. I am the God that he left thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word. I sent my word and he 